Emma Palmiter, she is the Ryerson Chair in Indigenous Government, Ryerson University, and joins us from Toronto. From Calgary, Zane Velji, Vice President of North Weather, and from Ottawa, Tim Powers, Vice President of Summa Strategies. Okay, a reminder, we're also going live on Facebook, and you can join the conversation. Leave us your comments and questions on our Facebook or YouTube channel, or you can tweet me at CBC. Okay, uh, the folks at home didn't have the benefit of seeing you uh, individuals there in the monitor as uh, Evan was uh, laying out the tweets. Uh, there was a fairly universal look of dismay across all your faces. <laughs> Pamela, we're going to start with you. What's your reaction to Maxime Bernier's twi Twitter tirade? Well, I I'd love to know what extreme diversity is because the opposite is what token diversity, where you just you know hold up a couple of diverse people and that you say that represents your country. It's also bitterly bitterly ironic for indigenous peoples to have someone from the settler population come and say you know diversity is going to ruin our country well hello there's indigenous people where we have suffered extreme assimilation forces from these uh, you know settler populations but you don't hear indigenous people saying well we don't want diversity in this country so I think he could learn a thing or two from indigenous peoples and really stop focusing on this wave of you know uh, anti diversity populism that seems to be so rampant in the US right now Zane your turn yeah extreme diversity is, uh, <laughs> is a good name for a rock band I think I should take that one uh, as its front man no I think he's categorically wrong on this one first of all the definition of extreme diversity secondly this is a country that stands as a rare exception in the world where diversity has been bridged on our strength and you cannot overdose on your strength it's clear why he's doing this but as a, as a country I think Canada has stood alone in many ways where other countries have negated multiculturalism or relegated it as being a failed experiment we've effectively legislated it and have had quite successful outcomes from it so I think he's absolutely off base on this one it's showing why his own party's coming out for it but don't be surprised if this is a trial balloon by Maxime Bernier to try to test the waters on what is the right side of populism so to speak um, but it's it's gonna fail here in Canada okay there's so much to get to here and I just want to get as I have been everyone's reaction to it overall off the top so Tim your reaction to Bernier's comments well you know John there's that soap opera like uh, the, through the sands of the hourglass so go the days of our lives through the sands of the hourglass so go Maxime Bernier's daily tweets and sometimes they don't make a hell of a lot of sense and who tweets about this six times on a Sunday night Max you need more things to do um, I, I would say this though John uh, this is not helpful to state the obvious to the Conservative Party at all. You've seen his colleagues come out. He does, though, I think want to try, and it's done in the most ineloquent and clumsy way to have a debate about Canadian identity. It's something we debate all the time, and people, there are some who will applaud Maxime for not being politically correct. But pro tip, Max, don't put destroy and diversity in the same tweet, or you're going to lose the argument right off the bat. Okay, but here's what I, because I reread and reread them as many people did today, trying to understand this. Um, who are these people who refuse to integrate into our society, who live apart in ghettos? Who are these people? Is there any way we can read into what the intended audience is for that remark and the intended reality of that remark, if you will? I, I don't know who those groups of groupings of people in his mind are. I don't know if he again is in eloquently speaking to an audience that uh, is older, uh, is in decline demographically in different parts of the country, who are nervous about change, uh, and he's playing to them. And if he is, that's a terrible thing to do. He wouldn't be the only politician who does it. Certainly all politicians in this country do it in different ways. I don't know if that is what he's attempting to do, but again, not very well done and not very helpful. People need to be brought together, not split apart, because we only need to look at the U.S. to see what splitting is doing to a great society. And it's a, potentially hurting the chances of the Republicans come November as well. Zane, you're going to jump in there? No, I was saying that's a very diplomatic way that Tim's put together that audience segmentation for Bernie, but I think he's right. And I think at the same time here, we're looking at the discord within the United States, the discord within Europe, uh, to the point where certain countries, including 
Denmark, for example, is now welcoming in refugees, but saying, oh, by the way, when you do come in, uh, we have a program for you that ultimately cleanses you of who you were prior to entering in this country. I'm not saying he's going that far, but he wants to maybe not take the entire Kelly Leach playbook, but certainly is trying to borrow a chapter and see how it how it pans out with, with the broader populace. Well, and here's here's another concern. So, you know, we can talk about this, you know, as, as commentators and on a macro level and say, ah, oh, it's just a Bernier tweet. But, you know, these kinds of comments are actually toxic and they do find their way down into communities and actually cause divisions. So here's the thing about people sitting in coffee shops. You know, that guy's right. I don't want this person or that person in my community. This is threatening the old old stock Canadians and and our yeah. real identity and it it is very much toxic and that's my concern because social media has such a far reach and he's basically giving people a license to 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 act this way to act on this kind of toxic ideology around diversity or immigration or whatever he's trying to get at We're and this would not be the first time that 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 would have happened right if we mm -hmm. look back just to our last federal election for example it could be argued that Justin Trudeau won that last election on the question of who is a Canadian and what does it mean to be Canadian. And the only reason that happened is because we had terms like old stock Canadian or we had terms like barbaric cultural practices or questioning the role of Muslims in, in Canadian yeah. society. So this was not too long ago that a chapter of this playbook was once again mm -hmm. thrown on the table as a as a distraction to, to larger uh, issues to, to kind of bridge apart and wedge apart Canadians. We're getting a lot of reaction from people online here. For example, John Skinner on YouTube asks, uh, how much new culture can can we really afford? We're getting a number of comments like that. Um, Maxime Bernier it seems to be making a calculation, yeah. though, that there is support for some of his comments out here. Uh, Tim, do you want to pick that up, and we'll go around the panel yeah, on that yeah, question? Yeah, I, I think there, I, I think there is in different ways, John. And but I agree with Pam. There's a danger when you play off of it, and, and let's not just put the finger on Bernier. Although uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure Andrew Scheer would like to rub him out a little bit today, but uh, um, all politicians play off of this. Uh, there is a frustration, I think, out there that Mr. Trudeau does what's called virtue signaling too often where he identifies specific values that he believes are important and that Canadians he in turn believes are important and uh, and should uh, follow a particular path. That's where, why people like the, the last person who you, uh, his name you read, uh, is offering comments like that. You remember Mr. Trudeau went a little too far the other way when he talked about people kind. This is a really dangerous game that they're all playing. The great eloquence of Canada is that we're having this discussion tonight. We should be having this discussion, though, without it being about fear. And politicians usually make it about fear. Oh, if this mm -hmm. particular group uh, advances more quickly than that particular group, um, that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. God forbid. And it also is a complete uh, misunderstanding of many elements of our history, but that's not what the politicians are into. They're into grinding out votes and using code words often to do that. And I think what's misunderstood here is, you know, we live in a country where our identity is inherently pluralistic, to, to yes. paraphrase what the Aga Khan said, right? I am as much a, a man as I am Muslim as I am Canadian. And I think what, what Mr. Bernie is trying to do, and he's certainly trying to appeal to a group of people who might think that there is an order to that, that I am more Canadian than I should be a man or Muslim uh, in my particular case. And I think that, that question of identity uh, is the exact same experiment that has been uh, used as a wedge to divide people in this country and it's inherently very very dangerous we sit here in a country where in Ottawa Tim where you are where there's a global center for pluralism uh, in downtown Ottawa which used to be a war museum and so we have this history of pluralism of diversity of multiculturalism that is so rich to our Canadian fabric uh, we can't turn away from that and, and it's not just about, you know, the moral nature of it and what, what people believe in and what they don't. And this, this debate really, you know, ignores the fact that there's laws in this country. There's anti-discrimination laws, human rights laws, rights that protect, you know, immigrants, indigenous peoples. And these are things that simply aren't up for debate. It's the law. It's not like a politician can just say, well, you know, we don't believe in that stuff anymore. So, um, you know, let's, let's have less of this. 
this. There's laws in this country and we shouldn't be telling Canadians that on a whim or because they, you know, this is the populist wave that you can just ignore the core human rights and anti-discrimination laws in this country which say you can't actually discriminate on that basis. But John, can I add can I add one other element to it that's sure. something Pam said that I want to pick up on? There's also not the ability to have an eraser either. Uh, and we have to look at all the imperfection here and understand the histories. Pam is mm -hmm. well articulated and rightly articulated in the past uh, a lot of the significant injustices that have been done to indigenous peoples. But we never have the ability to have a proper conversation mm -hmm. about it without it being polarized. And last week, and I, maybe Mr. Bernier was playing off of this, uh, we had the case of the Sir John A. Macdonald statue in Victoria being taken down. Um, because many view Mr. McDonald's, former Prime Minister McDonald's treatment of indigenous people as heinous, but he was also the first Canadian Prime Minister. So in, instead of having mm -hmm. a debate about the propriety of that and what leaving the statue actually meant and did it erase a terrible chapter in our history or should it stay there, uh, we, we get into this politically correct discussion. And guess what? The one thing that Maxime Bernier, Bernier thrives on is throwing hand grenades into the politically correct environment and he has a, a tribe, to use his word, of supporters that love him for that and will view him as a bit of a cultural hero uh, themselves. We do want to get to the politics aspect of this, too. And it's worth noting we haven't heard from the Prime Minister per se, but what we are hearing from is, for example, a fundraising letter that went out today from the Liberal Party. And I'm just going to read from one of, uh, talking about, uh, as for Andrew Scheer's Conservatives, once again, they're showing that they are entirely out of touch with Canadians in this country's commitment to inclusion. Uh, we would never go numb to this kind of politics, We the kind of deep divisiveness and negativity that Canadians rejected in 2015. Chip in now to stop Andrew Scheer's Conservatives trying to divide us any further. So the fundraising letter yep. has already gone out from the Liberals using Bernier's language. Let's talk about the political uh, consequences of this potentially. Uh, we'll begin with you, Pam. Uh, are the Conservatives going to pay the price? Well, it, it depends. I mean, it depends how broad-based their support is, how how much of this populist wave they can ride. I mean, look at what happened here in Ontario with the election of Premier Doug Ford. I mean, he's a prime example of, you know, coming in no kind of po real policies except buck a beer and, and some other smaller policies. And, and that guy gets elected on, you know, this wave of populism. And the Conservatives haven't come out and strong strongly distance themselves. So Sheer hasn't come out and said this is just absolutely deplorable yeah. and we are not about that, which also leaves it dangling in the minds of conservative supporters. Well, hey, maybe he's the not so absolutely. blatant guy, you know, sending this, you know, unwritten message, unspoken message to their supporters. So it is a cause for concern. Yeah, I mean, this is, in. if we read the Machiavellian handbook, this is having your cake and eating it too, right? Yeah. This is, this by not, by keeping Bernier in caucus, they are able to have the guy that can occasionally go rogue, ironic that he's a libertarian, but that's for another day, that can, that can go rogue on this issue, but still, you know, have mainstream MPs just denounce him, so that when it comes time to vote, this is the only sort of solution for people who actually buy into their views. So, mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that this is Maxime Bernier going rogue on his own. Mm. Uh, I think this is part of a trial balloon to actually have him and, and signal to people that, hey, if this is what you feel, we hear you and we are the party that, while we're going to distance ourselves mainstream from it, your guys in here in this caucus and in this party for that particular issue. Guys, we're out of time for this. Time oh, for this. I'm afraid. John, Sorry, oh, John, you're killing me. I would just say the Conservative <laughs> Convention is coming next week. Yes, right. Andrew right. Shear doesn't want this hanging over his head. And it may well be. Tim, we gave you a supplementary, so there you go. Uh, listen, Thanks, John. Uh, guys, thank you so much. We uh, have not heard the last of this. Very likely, we're having this debate, and probably Maxine Bernier is getting exactly the response that he expected he would get. <laughs> Pam Palmiter, Zane Velji, and Tim Powers, thank you all for joining thank us you. tonight. Thanks so much.